What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hi, guys. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Great day for a Chief Chat, right? Oh, it's always a great always. day for a Chief Chat. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> my so favorite got... day of the week. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So we have a very special guest today that has served in one of the premier combat forces and is here to drop some jewels, some knowledge in leadership and in life in general. So without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Our guest today is the former commanding officer of the Navy SEAL Team 2, leading a 2,000-member special operations task force in Afghanistan. He is a class of 2008 White House Fellow and served as Director of Defense Policy and Strategy at the National Security Council under Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama. His new book, Never Enough, a Navy SEAL Commander on Living a Life of Excellence, Agility, and Meaning, is chock full of leadership insights and great news. The military Military community can find this at exchange stores and shopmyexchange.com. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Mike Hayes. Hey. What's going on, Mike? How you doing? Hey, Chief Osby, it's such a pleasure to be with you and Julie, Leah. Thank you for having me into the larger community of, of everybody, AFES. Uh, thank you so much for lifting up this great nation and serving us around the globe. I've, I've benefited greatly from your organization over many years. So thanks, thank, thanks to all of you. Awesome. Excellent. Thanks so much for that, Mike. And for everybody watching, you know what to do. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your questions and comments for Mike in the comments section. We will read those live. Now is a great time to start your watch party so you can enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page well, you should because we have terrific guests lined up for you. Um, military exclusive guests. Awesome. Awesome. So Mike, man, thanks so much for joining us on Chief Chat. Hey, Chief. No, pleasure's mine. Thanks for having me, my friend. Absolutely. So we look we look forward to, uh, you know, chatting with you today. And so can you tell the viewers where you're call, calling us from and how you've been faring during the pandemic? Absolutely. I'm coming from the sunny Westport, Connecticut. Uh, after 20 years in the SEALs, I retired in Westport and I've been here for almost nine years now. And uh, a fair during the pandemic, the same as everybody else. There have been some some uh, really challenging days, but some some real uh, shifts that have, you know, you try to find the silver lining in whatever you can. And uh, But thanks for asking. And I, I, I'd ask the same for you. How about yourself, Chief? Oh, man, I'm, I'm awesome. So um, I just came from Fort Drum, New York. Um, I was there the, from Monday to Wednesday. I got home at like midnight last night. Uh, and so, and, and turned around and, 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 and and uh, you know, came to the office pretty early this morning because uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, I was prepared for the interview. And man, it's I'm not a coffee drinker, so but I feel like I need to start drinking coffee <laughs> <laughs> on days like this. Yeah, but uh, yeah. how's how's the weather up in there in Connecticut? Is it is it shifting from from uh, into because. I was in New York and I, it was a tr strategically planned because you, you know, there's, there's some places that you don't want to go during November, December time frame. You want to go <laughs> around springtime and, and Fort Drum, New York is definitely one of those places. Well, you're a smart man. There's a, you know how to work your TAD, uh, obviously just <laughs> like the yes, best. Yes, <laughs> but uh, Hey, you know, it's funny you asked because I, I did my run this morning and this morning was the first run that I actually sweat on. So I think we've turned oh. the corner. <laughs> so, uh, maybe it's TMI, but, uh, but it's beautiful weather here. Awesome. Getting into sweat season. Love it. Um, so from your time as a Navy SEAL to being a White House fellow to serving at the National Security Council, Mike, you've embraced this life of service. What has called you to serve at such a high level? Well, thanks, Julie, for asking. It's the same as everybody. It's really the concept that we say in the SEAL teams, team, teammate, self. But the SEALs don't have the corner market on that concept. Everybody who wears the <laughs> uniform and everybody who, who serves even out of uniform, Julie and Leah, like yourselves and like, like hundreds of thousands of others, it's really about lifting others up and being focused on, on the, the positive impact we can have on others. And that's what this great community, your entire you know, 350,000 person community is all about. I just know it. Wonderful. And... Tell us about your career. You had a heroic military career. So is there a moment um, with the Navy SEALs that stands out to you the most? And then what did it mean to you to be a SEAL? 
Leah, I cringe if you say heroic in the same sentence as me. I, I was privileged to work with heroes, but all I did was the same as everybody else who puts on the uniform. We, we figure out like, what is the outcome that our nation calls us to go try to achieve? How do we find the best possible paths to go do that? How do we come up with creative operational plans so that we, I joke around in the SEALs that the L stands for lazy. How do we find the laziest <laughs> way to go do the job? So that, but, but in all seriousness, so that we can save some energy for the next thing we need to go do or rest and recover for the next thing we can't see around the corner. Um, you know, a, a really, that's a great question. I have so many, gosh, hundreds or thousands of memories in the SEALs. Uh, one that comes to mind is in 2007 at the peak of the insurgency in Iraq, uh, my, I was the, the deputy commander for all of the special operations in, in Anbar province, Iraq. We were out pursuing bad people who do bad things to good people, just like everybody who wears a uniform. And uh, this particular night, we ended up, uh, we were pursuing some Americans that were uh, dust one, duty, uh, uh, duty status uh, unknown, whereabouts unknown. And, um, and so we were trying to get intelligence. We ended up in this house, uh, about 16 or 18 SEALs that ended up being rigged to explode and uh, we figured it out upon immediately upon entering the house. And we have a call sign for that. Uh, just say, pretend avocado. Avocado comes over the, 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 everybody's earpiece and you can't get out of that house fast enough. And I'll never forget that night because I dove out of like the, I don't know, the one and a half story. There was like a, a window and a landing and everybody was going out doors and windows. And the funny thing is I ended up on the ground outside, maybe, I don't know, five or 10 feet from the edge of the house. And I look left and there's my really good friend named Josh. And both of us, you know, roughly 10 or 15 years after SEAL training, we're doing something that every SEAL trainee does that I had not done for 15 years, which is when you think something's going to explode, you, you put your hands behind your head and you cross your feet and you open your mouth because the, you, the, so that you, you, that's how you improve survivability. The funny thing is this guy, Josh, and I went through different BUDS classes, different SEAL training classes. There we were doing the exact same thing in the middle of the night, in the middle of Iraq. And it was just like buds, SEAL training all over again. And we were just, you know, <laughs> and we actually were getting shot at and we started chuckling, you know, it was, it was, um, and so, you know, it's just oh, one gosh. of those memories where, you know, there's, there's a lot to it though, because number one, I think the lesson from it is training is real. You know, you train how you fight, just like everybody says in the military. And, and that training carries all the way through even 15 years later. But more importantly, it speaks to what's most important in the world, which is friends and teammates. And, and, and we all know that we don't do things for, you know, for principles like democracy and flags. We do things for our brothers and our sisters next to us who we, who we might not use the L word love when we're in service. But I'll tell you, that's really what it is, is the love of teammates and, and, and our friends that we work with. That's why we sacrifice. And, and that, was, that was probably something that, that stuck with me. Yeah, I was, um, well, it's funny you say that because um, uh, I do consider, I consider the exchange a family, but I, I definitely consider my military uh, teammates a family, right? And and I kind of equate it to my own family. Like I love my family all the time, but sometimes I don't like them. So I, I always love them, but sometimes the, the like is, is another different thing. So uh, so I'm curious to know, like what what made you join the join the uh, the Navy, or, or have you always wanted to be a SEAL? Like what what you know? At what point in your life were you like, you know what, this is my path? Chief, that's a great question. And, you know, my grandfather was a uh, Naval Academy class of 1940. He was at Pearl Harbor on that infamous day, December 7th, 41. And he was, uh, he was on uh, out like a good, you know, any good young serviceman might have had a little bit of fun on a Saturday night. Oh, yeah, yeah, was definitely. With uh, six or seven of his mates, uh, you know, out, out in a bungalow, he jumped in a, in a, um, told me this story much later in life, but he jumped into a Jeep and made it back to his ship for the, the third wave of the attack he was on and manning his, his battle station for that third wave. And, and he just had a storied career. He was a commanding officer of the first helicopter squadron in um, North, North Island, California. Uh, he, you know, he flew search and rescue in Korea. And, and he, never, he was really just a man who Im imbued service and, and really never said might go in the military, but just always... Uh, showed through his acts like what it means to serve and that kind of really I think grew in me just like our family and our friends leave these marks on us that we both know and that we don't know and don't fully appreciate because we don't recognize it until years later but I know that uh, the thing that called me to serve was really the the inspiration of people I looked up to and, and um and so that that's uh, that that really was what it was and then your your second part of the question why the seals 
I don't know. I joined in 1993. I just turned 50 a few weeks ago. So, uh, you know, it, it's um, in 1989 when I was in college, we invaded Panama. There was a, a SEAL who I didn't know named John Connors who was killed on Patilla uh, Airfield. And the memorial service was at the chapel on, on my college campus. And I saw a community come together and, um, and pay tribute and respect. And it, it just also left a mark on me of, of, um, of, of seeing a community come together. And maybe I was just too dumb, but I said, you know, let me go try the hardest thing I possibly can and see if I can do it. And so I, I applied to SEAL training and then, and then the rest just kind of unfolded year by year. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, happy birthday to you. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's an amazing feat in itself, you know, to be on, on the planet for 50, 50 years, 50 spins is, is, is a great thing. So, uh, so congratulations on your new book, Never Enough. Uh, and, and when you say never enough, you aren't pushing for perfection. So what, what mindset are you channeling when you say never enough? Uh, Chief, thanks for asking. I, I titled the book Never Enough to be provocative for a reason. Some people hear never enough and you, you start thinking fame and fortune and material goods. And, and that's not it at all. Never enough is about meaning and impact. And so it really, the, the first third of the book is about excellence and personal excellence, organizational excellence, combination of stories, and then uh, also just concepts. Middle third of the book is mostly around agility and how we, how we be flexible in life. The, the last third, which is my favorite third, which is really about meaning and impact and purpose and why we're here on the planet. This isn't your typical SEAL book where, you know, I ran up the stairs and turned left and shot this guy or anything like that. This is really a book about uh, that, that brings together, you know, 30 years of learning, not just, for, just from the SEALs, but also from experiences in, you know, two White Houses and now in, you know, almost a decade of, of the private sector in, in business. And, you know, I, the other thing I would love to add here is that I'm not profiting from this book at all. I'm donating all of my profits from this book to a 501c3 that I started that pays off mortgages for Gold Star families. So I wow. like 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 every service person of our era of the last you know almost two decades now. We, we've we've all buried way too many friends. We we know what we know what loss is, right? Oh, and there's nobody in the who wears a uniform or 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 civilian clothes in support of the Department of Defense that that doesn't understand it and. And so, you know, I've committed my life to really trying to take care of those who bear the, the visible and the invisible wounds of war. I've at this point paid off five mortgages very quietly, no website, no fanfare, no nothing. And so that's why this book for me is so much more than a book. It's a, it's a mission. Man, that, that's an awesome story. So I did an interview for a, another podcast and uh, they asked me what the most compelling thing about Chief Chat and, and what, have, what have I kind of pulled away from Chief Chat? Uh, since I've done it, and and it's and and my answer was it's the incredible things that people are doing for other people. Uh, I think we're qu quick as a maybe society or clickbait. We're, we want to see the negative of what somebody messed up on, but we we're, we're never. There's so many people doing incredible things for other people, uh, and you're just another kind of testament to what what, what I was talking about. So uh, thank you for sharing that, and thank you for what you're doing for our service members and our families. And same in return to the whole community. Thank you. I want to echo what Chief said. That's that's incredible what you're doing to help others. And then as far as the book goes, you know, everyone, not not just service members, veterans or civilians, but I mean, everybody can benefit from your leadership tips. What is kind of the main insight you're hoping that readers walk away with after uh, Never Enough? The main the main purpose of the book is to lift people up. It's in, in a lot of times we don't want to lift ourselves up because it makes it seem like we are self aggrandizing or the president of our own fan club. But the truth is, how do we invest in ourselves to lift ourselves up, not because we want to look great, but so that we can lift others up. You know, it, it's really disabusing people of the notion that it, it's it's that it's not okay to, to to work on yourself. How do we all work on ourselves and, and and become bigger, better, faster, stronger? You know, I like to say we're the average of the people we hang out with. I've always aspired to hang out with people who are smarter and faster and stronger, and that rubs off on me, and I become more of the same. But the um, the reason for the book is to lift people up and really to help understand that you know that uh, while some people might not be seals or work in the White House Situation Room. How do you make it relatable so that people in their own lives can connect? And the thing I would say is, look, we all have different abilities, different interests, different skills. And so how do we create a, a, a nation and frankly a, frankly, a planet 
so that we um, we celebrate people's differences and we use those our, our skills to lift people up in a way that is recognizes and appreciates that we are all different and have different abilities and interests. It's not just like oh you got to be a seal or you got to go work in the White House. You know when I was I don't know I'd be really candid and open here. You know when I was 21 years old and one of 19 graduates from a class of 120, I thought I was probably cooler than I was. The faster that you learn that you're no cooler than anybody else in on the planet, the faster your trajectory to success and, and faster the trajectory to learning. So a little bit of a long answer, Julie, but uh, you know, my wife will confirm I could I could do these one way conversations really well. <laughs> Very good. And then um, what motivated you to share your leadership advice now, Mike? Leah, it was a hard decision to write a book, you know, especially in the SEAL community where we pride ourselves on being the quiet professionals. And, you know, you, you can, you can um, you know, love or hate people who write books. But my firm belief and I, now after I've thought about this, being out for, you know, retired for, for eight years or so, is that if you have something to say and you and your intention is to, to help, then get it out there. You know, I, in life, I think so many times we as Americans or just humans are really fast to judge people on actions when we should be at judging their intentions. You know, I've rarely, met, almost never met somebody in my 30 years of professional life that goes to work and says, what can I screw up today? You know, I only meet <laughs> people who have great intent. And so if sometimes we all fall short, right? And so if we fall short, how do we not judge people on falling short, but on what they were trying to do? And so that I, I felt like, look, if somebody want, in my community or any community wanted to criticize me for writing a book, that's not the people I want to be around. And I don't care. Frankly, it doesn't matter to me. Those aren't the, those aren't the people that pull me up like I talked about before. So uh, and then the second part of the question, I would say is, uh, you know, really, honestly, it's you can't write a book that just says how great you are. That's not a book. You know, it's it's um, you have to be real. <laughs> You have to be honest. Look, I've done more, many things wrong and I could have done a lot of things better in my life. The, um, and so how do you share those and, in a way that is constructive and open? And you know, the word vulnerable gets used a lot now. My first, my 20 years in the SEALs, I grew up in an era where, uh, where it was either, you, you either showed strength or perceived strength and you never showed weakness. Absolutely. I spoke at a SEAL graduation in Coronado, California about four years ago, where I said, asking for help is a sign of strength, not weakness, you know, and, and, and um, so that I think is really what's different. And that's why, frankly, I'm, it, it's, you'll find stories in the book that, that are not, that don't necessarily make me look like the best, like the best seal or the best person on the planet. The key is, do, do you learn afterwards? You know, great people and great organizations will always fall short from time to time. What matters is how do we react to that? Do we learn and improve and not make the same mistake twice? That's what life is about. So that, that's, that would be my, uh, that would be my answer. No, and, and like you said, if you, if you push good stuff out into the atmosphere, this stuff normally comes back to you. Uh, and it doesn't come in and how you think you're gonna get it. It just comes, uh, I tell people ask me like, why are you still in uh, chief? You're, you're past 20, whatever the case may be. And I was like, well, even when I think about leaving, you know, I've helped somebody along the way and somebody's like, Hey chief, thank you for doing this. Or, and so that stuff kind of pumped me up and gets me, gets me motivated and kind of keeps, keeps me going. Chief, I love what you're saying. And it's kind of like, you know, I've been asked many times, Hey, how, how do you, what advice do you have for the pandemic? And you just gave the best advice you can give, which is, uh, you know, we're all going to, we're all going to have hard days. The thing is, we're not all going to have the same hard day. So how do we look for people who are having a relatively harder day and then pull them up? Right. Mm -hmm. Because look on an absolute basis, the last year and a half have been hard for everybody, but on a relative basis, some people are having a relatively better and a relatively worse day. The people having the relatively better day, if they can be intrusive and, and, and say, Hey, how can I help you? That also, not only does that help the person, not ironically, it makes us feel better. And it helped by, by what I've learned is that in giving, we actually pull ourselves up and it makes us really feel good to the core. Absolutely, man. I, see, I told y'all we we're doing, dropping gems all day long. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we got four hours or maybe eight hours. I hope everybody can tune in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so you've had some really you know cool positions uh, that you've held throughout your life. And I know you, I know you, you, you don't like to kind of uh, sensationalize your, the position that you've been, uh, but 
but you know, you, you're the commander of a SEAL team. Uh, you work with uh, two presidents. Uh, uh, and so how, how would you describe your leadership style? Um, and, and say uh, you were, it was Mike going through college and uh, what advice would you give uh, Mike going through college on how to become a better leader? Well, that's a great topic. Look, I can sound like I know exactly what the heck I'm talking about now. Look, I don't have life figured out just like the rest of us. Like, so, uh, you know, like we're all learning and we're all on the journey. It's about the journey, not the destination. And so uh, what I, one of the things I wrote about in Never Enough is, is, the, is confidence and humility. I can sound like a very, I am a very confident person. I'm also a very humble person. The problem is that some people confuse uh, confidence with arrogance. And see, and, and so how do we instead have a lot of confidence on knowing what we can do well, but simultaneously knowing what we're not good at and where we can get where friends are better. I describe myself even in the private sector now. In fact, I just said this last night, you know, I'm not a person who plays an instrument. I conduct bands. I can find you somebody who plays every single instrument instrument better than me. What my comparative advantage is conducting the band. You know, and so how do we know what we can do well? And then, and then, like I say, also in the book, like leader, leading and following is easy. The hard part is knowing when to do which. So my leadership style was one where I really was very comfortable knowing when to move back and let others take credit. And of course, it's cliche, you know, take, take, take you know, less of the credit and more of the blame. But, but it's cliche for a reason. And I think just genuinely, very deeply, like if you would have asked me, like, hey, Mike, you could go on this mission and save the save the planet and save you know, all these people and get the Medal of Honor, or one of the people on your team could, which would you rather do? Very, very deeply and honestly, I would rather see a teammate recognized because the team's success is all of our success. And I really, really think that teams are strengthened when, um, when the perception of credit is, is shared, when, when, when people believe that all of the credit will be equally shared, and if people believe that the credit or the blame is going to be disproportionately shared, that's the first way teams start breaking down. And so we have to. So my leadership style was always one that tried to try to really cohese the group and help us understand that, sure, we all have ranks. But like at the end of the day, we're all just playing different roles. Everybody's got gifts and abilities. It's recognizing the, the real specialness of the experiences that people have. That's great advice. And that's advice every single person can could use no matter whether they're a college student or whether they're at the beginning of their career or at the end of their end of their journey in the working world that's excellent excellent advice now mike you touched on this a little bit earlier but part of your leadership has been giving back so can you talk to us a little bit about your efforts to support military families gold star families yeah i'd love to so you know like i said we all have seen a lot of people who've had it a lot harder than we have right and so I'm a deep believer in the saying, it, it, to those who much has been given, much is expected. I've been really fortunate. Look, I've been through some really hard days. I've been shot at, I've been rocketed. I've been on, rocketed while I was on Skype with my wife and daughter in Afghanistan, when I was in Afghanistan. Wow. Like I, I, um, I uh, ju jumped out of that building rig to a slip per load. I've been run over by a Carnival cru cruise liner. I was held at gunpoint in Peru in 96 and threatened with execution and torture and, and, um, and, and, and then I've been on a lot of operations that have gone really, really well. So, uh, you know, I think the main thing is recognizing that, that while I've had a lot of great and a lot of hard days, the thing I'm passionate now is about giving back. And that, that is what life is about. And so very few people have had the same experiences that, that, that I and, and, and others have had. So, so really, how do we give people a window into that in a way that's relatable? And to me, the, uh, I founded the 1162 Foundation. It doesn't have a website. All, if you know how to drill like six pages deep in the IRS's website, you will find it. You'll find that it's in court. There's no full-time employees. It's incorporated out of my house that I'm sitting in right here. And, um, and I've, I've, I'll tell you a quick story. We just paid off our fifth house from the proceeds of, of the book and, other, and the generosity of a, of a couple of people who just privately and confidentially wanted to help. But there was a woman who, who lost her husband in the middle of the war in Afghanistan wonderful human, wonderful person who was, who was KIA. And uh, she got back on her feet after the loss, built a little business, was, was doing okay. Uh, she and her kids lost the, lost the business in the pandemic and, and didn't own a home. And so right around Thanksgiving of last year, 
these are some of the, the, the most emotional times, but to be able to, to be able to fly down or, or, or be able to get on a phone and just and, and look somebody in the eyes and say, Hey, guess what? You've got a house now. It's just, a, it, it is literally one of the most powerful moments that you can do. I, and I've been privileged to do that five times. And look, these women have gone through so freaking much that all I'm really doing is alleviating 0.0001% of their stress in the situation, but even helping that 0.001%, it's really, that's why I wrote the book, like not just to help. And that's why I'm not, not ashamed to ask for help getting the book out there, buying the book. It's on Amazon for, it's on Amazon, but buy it through Shop My Exchange, please. Um, but you can learn about it on Amazon, uh, but leave me a review there, please, or something. But, uh, you know, that's, again, I only ask for that help because I'm not profiting from it. It's about doing great things for this, this whole beautiful community that we're all a part of. Oh, man, that's, that's an amazing story, man. I, I, I really appreciate you for sharing that. And, and, and it's crazy, you you get a feeling that you probably, it's it's comparable to probably the best things you've ever had in your life, just helping somebody else do something else. Not you going out and buying a, a, a Ferrari or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. the things that we try to do for ourselves that make us feel good, helping somebody else and seeing their reaction, man, it, there's no, there, there's not too many things better that feel better than that. That's totally right. Helping is, is it is, it is why we're here. Absolutely. Wonderful. And Mike, we have soldiers and airmen, guardians, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members joining us live today. What words of inspiration or hope can you share with the military community watching? Well, gosh, I would say, first of all, thank you for your service is really cliche, but it's again, cliche for a reason. Everybody is serving. And um, I would say the, the inspirational call to action is is our, how are we using our gifts in, in ways that are able to spread that inspiration of service to the, to the other 329 million Americans? Look, a, a little over a million people wear the, wear the uh, uniform uh, in, in active duty. There are about 17 million veterans. The last time I looked, I don't know, it might be 18 million, but out of a nation of about 330 million. And so look, this community that is on your, your, your site knows what service is. The question is, how do we inspire the other 329 million people to, to, to serve and that, that in the ways that make the most sense for them? It doesn't have to be putting the uniform on. It can be going to you know, clean up the forest or get plastics out of the ocean or go, go uh, you know, take care of the elderly or teach the young, whatever that is. Taking ownership in this country is what will make it great. If we go back to e economics 101, you know, gross domestic product is just labor times productivity. Labor is the people, number of people in the workforce, product, which is just birth rates and, and, um, and immigration policy. And then productivity is how efficient we are. And so as we can help this nation be more productive and more efficient, that's going to create more economic strength for this nation. And with more economic strength, we can buy more security. We can buy more health care. We can buy more education, more whatever we need, where we can pay down debt and, and make it make the, the nation economically stronger for the future. So in all cases, um, Julie, Leah, and Chief, my, my, uh, my ask would be to think about ways we can inspire others to make this nation stronger every single day. And of course, to buy my book too, because that'll help too. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, wanted to turn to our live Facebook feed to share some of the viewer comments with you. So that's why I'm looking at my phone, not trying to be rude, just trying to read the comments. Um, so James Holmes is watching. James says, Hua. Uh, let's see. We have Chris Ward from Dallas is watching. He says, what an impressive resume, true American hero. And Army Family and MWR programs, they're watching as well. They say, hi, Exchange team. We are sharing this interview on our Facebook page. So maybe you'll get some more um, people interested in uh, in purchasing the book from because of their share. Uh, Eddie Hill is watching and wants to know where he can buy Never Enough. Eddie, you can buy it from shopmyexchange.com, tax-free. Matters where you shop, consider shopping with us. Um, and let's see, um, Scott Casey says, hello, Commander. And D.D. Kelly says, thank you for your service. So you have a lot of fans out there, a lot of people watching, hopefully, um, Hopefully they'll check out Never Enough and can uh, assist you on your on your mission to continue helping military families. Well, uh, I'd say back to James Hooyah. I won't repeat Hua back to you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and, uh, no, it's really great. I'm on Twitter at, at this is Mike Hayes, one word. And then Instagram is this is dot Mike Hayes. And really those are platforms to try to do great things in the planet. So, um, and, or I'm on LinkedIn. If you Google Mike Hayes seal, I'm, I'm the only one of those. So um, no, it's, it's really, really awesome to be here and to be part of this community. And, and genuinely, I, I really greatly appreciate, again, I'm, because I'm, the only way I could ask this is because I'm not profiting that, that support for the never enough mindset. It's a movement and a mindset, a mission, love the support. So thank you so much uh, for, for having me here. Absolutely. So Mike, besides the new book, what's, what's ahead for you or what else you got going on? Well, right now I'm, I'm in a role helping run operations and transformation for VMware, which is a, a large software company based in Palo Alto, Palo Alto, California. I think you have to be able to say that in order to work there. So I might have just failed that IQ test. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but in all seriousness, uh, I, I'm in West, I'm on the East Coast. They're on the West Coast. I haven't really, like many people, I've started from behind the, 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 the computer screen. I'm having a great run enjoying the mission of VMware, which is is really to help power the digital transformation for the for the world. And uh, and that also helps that productivity that I was talking about earlier. But look, I, I think, you know, I, I really down the road, I'd like to to return to public service in my for my last chapter. I don't over plan anything. I believe that in life, if we over plan our, our careers more than three, four, five years down the road, it's just going to not be true. That's why I believe mm -hmm. just build the foundation, keep working on the foundation and the walls and the roof can come later. And as long as we're oriented the right way on this planet, then, then, then just great things will come. Awesome. Wow. And before we wrap up a reminder for our viewers, it matters where you shop and never enough is available at shopmyexchange.com. So Mike, you just gave out your social handles, but where can our viewers go to learn, learn more about you and also find out about the book? Well, thank you, Leah. I'll just say it again. Twitter is at this is Mike Hayes, one word, Instagram, this is dot Mike Hayes. And I would say, you know, look at the reviews on Amazon or Goodreads and you'll, you'll get a feel for what, what you'd be getting into. And then of course, shop my exchange is where to buy the book, please. And uh, I, I've benefited in combat zones overseas in forward deployed locations from AFES. It's an incredible organization. And I, and you know, it sounds funny, but to, to sometimes walk the, the three aisles where all you have is soap and toothbrushes and, and, and uh, you know, simple things, mm -hmm. shower stuff, but from brands that you, that you know, back from home, it is such a morale lifter to see those brands on the AFES um, shelves. And, and uh, it's just a little piece of home everywhere you go. So I'm so appreciative of, of your mission. And, um, and uh, then for, for learning more, I would just say, you know, it's, it's, it really is, it's as simple as grabbing the book. It's a simple, it's on audiobook as well. If you'd rather listen, you could listen on audible.com. But um, I read, I personally read the book, but I, I, um, I would just encourage people It's six or seven hours and I, I'm, I'm heavily biased, but I think it's, it's worth a read. Yeah. Well, well thank we you for that. Oh, yeah, we sorry, got, Chief. We, no, we got to get Mike a t-shirt, man. He just, he just said our motto on there. You like a little piece of home. We go where you go. Man, you, you got a down pack, Mike. So you got, you got, you got, you got a home here at Exchange whenever if, if you, you need one. So sign yeah. me up, Chief. I'm in, my friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so Mike, man, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, first off, just thank you for your service uh, to the, to this nation. Um, you, you, uh, uh, along with you know the the, the little over a million and seventeen million veterans, seventeen million veterans. Um, just thank you so much for for paving the way for folks like me that are still wearing the uniform to, to still be carrying on that torch. So uh, definitely appreciate that. And, and your family, your family, uh, you know, you come from a, a rich military uh, family. So thank them for their service as well. Um, and just insight, man. We, I loved hearing your, your insight and, and I'm excited to, to read more of the book because uh, you really uh, came with a really good perspective on life in general. And, and I know it, we evolve as humans and we kind of go through a selfish phase and then we come into another phase of, of life to where we understand that it's not about us, it's more about other folks. And you're, you're really spreading that message and I'm hoping that our viewers uh, are able to kind of connect with, with your book in that regard. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Chief. It's, it's you and everybody else who are carrying all the weight, doing the harder work now. I'm, I'm one of these life is easy retired guys. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, thanks to you and the active community and the, and the community of civilians that support. Absolutely. But you're still, you're still plugged in, even though you, you don't have the uniform on anymore. You're still plugged into the community. So we, like I said, 
Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, your services. Means so much to our airmen, our soldiers, our guardians, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members uh, all over the world. So uh, uh, we wish you the best of luck. And uh, if you don't mind staying off on uh, once we get off live, I got to get some information from you. But thank you so much for your time. Thanks to all of you. And thanks for standing the watch to absolutely everybody, both the, the, the families as well, who have the harder jobs most absolutely, of the time. So absolutely. Thank my deep and sincere thanks to each of you and all of you. Awesome. Awesome. So we'll keep chatting out, y'all. Keep chatting out. Thank you. Bye, y'all.